Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, and welcome to your Longsword Weapon Workshop for Monster Hunter Rise. Weapon Workshops are our definitive guide to all the weapons, going over everything you could possibly want to know, starting with the basic behaviour and the moves, all the way up to the lesser known techniques, recommended combos, armour skills, combat strategies, and more. Essentially, everything you could possibly need to know about your chosen weapon, so that you can confidently take down whatever monster stands in your way. If you guys do enjoy this video and you do find it helpful, a like would be super appreciated. A ton of work and research goes into each and every one of these, so if you like them, let me know down below and share them with your friends if they're trying to pick up a new weapon. You can also find a link to the full playlist down below. We'll be covering all 14 weapons, so keep it locked as we update that list. Now, let's talk about the Longsword. It has the power of God and anime on its side. So by default, it is therefore the strongest weapon in the game. I am of course joking, but it is without a doubt an elegant weapon that perfectly balances both speed and power. Where some of the heavier hitting weapons typically lack mobility as a trade-off, the longsword is the perfect blend of both, allowing you to remain mobile, counter incoming attacks, and dish out great damage, all whilst looking like Himura Kenshin. It's also a weapon that has a relatively simple moveset, making it a great option to pick up if you're new to the series, or perhaps want a weapon that is reliable without too steep a learning curve. But learn to master this weapon and you can become untouchable. While not a complex weapon to pick up, the longsword does have one core mechanic that is important to understand before we go over the moves that you have at your disposal, and that is the spirit gauge. It's a mechanic that ultimately acts as your foundation to using this weapon correctly and efficiently, and will influence the behaviour of some of your more powerful moves. At the top of the screen you'll see this little meter, a small sword. This is your spirit meter. Whenever you land an attack with the longsword, this will begin to fill up. This is a resource that you can then consume by performing a series of attacks known as spirit attacks. More on how exactly these work shortly. However, the reason you need to know this to begin with is that this also ties into how you can go about maximizing the damage potential for this weapon. Successful completion of the spirit combo ends in this roundhouse slash, or this vertical slash. If this connects with the monster, your gauge will level up and change colour. This colour will also be reflected on your longsword itself. First it goes white, then yellow, and then red, with each subsequent spirit combo completion. There are other ways to level up this gauge, as you'll discover shortly, but keeping this topped up is important since for each level you gain an attack boost, white being the smallest, yellow medium, and red being the greatest. This meter will also deplete over time, You'll see this by the colour around the blade in the UI actively reducing, so keeping this topped up is important. If you don't, then once it reaches the end of the meter, your gauge will drop down a level. Red to yellow, yellow to white, and then white back to nothing. Furthermore, these levels are also a resource in themselves since some of your most damaging moves will consume these, so effective use of this weapon revolves around attacking to build meter, pulling off spirit combos or select counters to level up your gauge, and then consuming this when you have a clear opening to strike for incredible damage. That, in essence, is the way of the longsword. Now before we dive in and cover all of your available moves, it's first important to talk about your available switch skills, since these will alter your combos and playstyle. Switch skills are a mechanic in Monster Hunter Rise that allow you to swap out select moves and silk binds for your weapon to create your own personalised hunting style. Each weapon has three slots, and each slot has two skills to choose from. There is no right or wrong choice here, However, some of the skills do align better with certain playstyles, so it's important to understand their uses. I'll offer some suggestions a little bit later on in this video. For Longsword, the first slot revolves around your draw attack, and by default this is the Step Slash. If you've used Longsword before, you'll be very familiar with this move. It's the standard vertical slash attack that can be performed both on draw, or simply by pressing X whilst idle. It's a core part of your basic combo rotation, and it's a relatively quick attack. However, if you change this, then your alternate option is the Drawn Double Slash. This unleashes a vertical, then a horizontal slash. The animation is very similar to that of the EI Slash, albeit in the opposite direction, 
but this move has a couple of interesting properties. Firstly, it deals more damage than the Step Slash since it hits twice, so that's a nice bonus. But more importantly, this attack also allows you to absorb a hit. If you perform this into an oncoming attack, as you can see here, you can just walk straight through it, which allows you to then dive right into your combos. It is a little slower on the draw when compared to the Step Slash, but the ability to play more aggressively thanks to this is awesome. Furthermore, this doesn't completely remove the Step Slash either. The Drawn Double Slash, as the name suggests, is only a draw attack. When your weapon is unsheathed, the step slash is still present, so this is a really nice move. It's also worth noting that this is great at building Longsword Spirit Meter. As you can see from the draw alone, the bar jumps up quite considerably, so following this it doesn't take too much to be ready to dive into your spirit combo. In your second slot, you have the Spirit Round Slash combo. This is the standard Longsword Spirit combo that is used to level up your spirit meter. This goes from Spirit Blade 1, 2 and then 3, into the spirit round slash which is this wide horizontal attack that will level up your spirit meter if it connects with the monster it's a fantastic move and given the wide arc in which this attacks it is quite generous when it comes to landing that final and important hit it's also worth noting that while this animation does by default sheath your weapon you can also cancel this into the ei special sheath which is a move we'll cover later handy if you want to avoid being caught in that ending animation However, your alternate option is the Spirit Reckoning combo. The animation for this move might look familiar to those of you that played Brave Star Longsword in Generations Ultimate, but this move replaces the last two attacks of the Spirit combo, the Spirit 3 and the Spirit Round Slash, and instead gives you the Dividing Slash and the Spirit Reckoning attack. This hits harder, and the final hit attacks vertically, as opposed to horizontally. Much like the Round Slash, if this final hit lands, your Spirit Meter will level up too. However, being a vertical attack, it is a little less forgiving when landing a hit. If the monster moves wide, there's a good chance you'll miss. However, the other very useful component to this move is that if you input a direction during the dividing slash, you'll actually move during this motion. So you can use it to advance on a monster mid-combo and close the gap to ensure that last hit lands. Just keep in mind that adding in the forward motion does lengthen the animation, so it is still quicker to perform this stationary where possible. Furthermore, this, unlike the Spirit Round Slash, also does not sheath your weapon at the end of the motion, which means it's perfect for transitioning seamlessly into some of your more powerful moves. And then finally, for your third slot, this is once again your Siltbind option. By default, you have the Soaring Kick, which is a quick one wirebug cost move that sees you jump into the monster and launch yourself up. From there, you can either press X to initiate the Plunging Thrust. This move is not as damaging as the famous Helmbreaker, but it does fill your spirit gauge in blue, which sees this meter auto-regenerate for a short period of time, making it useful if you want to pull off a spirit combo. However, assuming you have at least white spirit gauge, then pressing ZR during the ascent will instead result in the spirit helm breaker, your most damaging move with this weapon. Keep in mind though that pulling off this move consumes a level of your spirit gauge, so if red, you drop to yellow, yellow to white, and white to nothing. Alternatively, you have the Sakura Slash. This is a cool whirlwind-like attack that sees you anime dash past the monster, leaving multiple slashes and lacerations in the process. This hits multiple times, and for this reason, it's actually a really nice move when paired with elemental or status builds. Furthermore, landing the attack will see the Spirit Meter level raised by 1, so if you're new to the weapon, it's actually a very easy way to reliably build your meter. It does, however, replace the Soaring Kick, meaning with this selected, you don't have access to the powerful Helmbreaker. So, as you can now begin to see, there is a fair few cool options to mess around with. Again, as mentioned, I'll offer some suggestions a little bit later on which ones to use, but for now, let's turn our attention to your basic moves with this weapon. Starting off with your weapon sheathed, pushing forward an X will see you draw into your standard overhead slice, the step slash, assuming you have that switch skill selected. This is the same move you'd perform with your weapon drawn, but obviously from here you can go seamlessly into your basic combo. Of course, if you have the drawn double slash equipped, then forward an X while sheathed will instead draw into that. And again, as a reminder, this can absorb an attack, so you can use this to play a little aggressively and dive into an attacking monster. Alternatively, pressing ZR with your weapon sheath sees you draw directly into your spirit combo, the move that you use to level up your spirit gauge, but more on this shortly. Now, with your weapon drawn, your basic X combo is 4 hits. This is comprised of 2 consecutive overhead slashes, followed by a stab, then a rising slash. You can also perform this same combo by swapping the third X input for A, but since it does the same thing, there's really no need. 
Your A attack on its own is a standalone thrust, like the third hit of the X combo. Meanwhile, pressing A two times will go from a thrust into a rising slash. And this again can be looped. This attack is also very useful later on as a means to quickly afford you access to your foresight slash, one of your counters, but again, we'll touch on that in a moment. If you want a shorter, quicker version of the basic combo, you can just go X, A, X, which will perform one overhead slice, a stab, and then a rising slash. This is also a pretty standard combo, but of course we'll go over which combos are more valuable a little bit later. Next up you have X plus A, which is your fade slash. By default, this will slice in front of you, seeing your hunter jump backwards. This can be used evasively to put some distance between you and the monster, but it can also act as a replacement for the first hit of the spirit combo, which we'll speak about next. It is however worth noting, you can also influence the direction of the fade slash by inputting a direction left or right with X plus A, and that'll allow you to fade in that direction. Furthermore, the fade slash can also be worked in mid-combo, so you can mix things up and move around more freely. Now, speaking of your spirit combo, assuming you have full or almost full meter, that's the gauge inside the sword UI, not the outside glow that comes later. Assuming this is almost full, pressing ZR four times will complete the spirit combo. The final hit of this, the spirit round slash by default, is the most important hit since if this connects with the monster, this will level up your longsword spirit gauge. It starts normal, then glows white, then yellow, and then red. This is reflected both in the UI and on your sword. Remember that with each level you gain an attack boost, plus this gauge level is also a resource that is used for select moves later on. It should also go without saying that good use of this weapon revolves around staying in red as much as you possibly can. Your spirit combo also has natural mind's eye, which means it won't bounce even if you use it on hard parts of the monster, so it's quite forgiving in that respect. Furthermore, keep in mind that this is not the only way you can level up your spirit gauge, but this is one way, so keep this in mind. Alternatively, if you have the spirit reckoning switch skill selected, then that same input will result in the two spirit attacks followed by the dividing slash and then the spirit reckoning. Inputting a direction with the dividing slash will allow you to move forward and advance during that attack, so it's useful for closing the gap. And again, much like the round slash, if the spirit reckoning attack connects, your spirit gauge will also level up. As mentioned earlier, you can also swap out the first hit with a fade slash, so following X plus A, pressing ZR three times will also complete the combo. Handy if you need to perhaps reposition, then go straight into spirit combo. Additionally, I mentioned that you need almost full gauge to complete this motion. One thing you can do if you're running a little bit low is work an X attack in between the first two hits so you would go ZRX, ZRX, and then complete the combo. This will build a small bit of additional meter with each X attack, so in the event that you're a tiny bit too low to finish the combo, this may help you out. That being said, there are better, easier ways to manage your meter, so in truth, you won't be using this option too much, but it's still good to know regardless. Now moving on to the Longsword's fancy moves. Firstly, if you're coming over from World, the Helm Splitter has been removed from your basic moves. It's now linked to a Silk by move, which we'll touch on shortly, so in Rise, ZR plus X no longer does anything. So moving on from there, following any attack, pressing ZR and A will see you perform the Foresight Slash. This offers a large evasive window and can act like a counter, allowing you to firm an incoming attack and follow up, in turn leveling up your meter. Keep in mind you do not need spirit gauge to perform this move, the meter inside the sword, but performing this will consume that meter, so use it wisely. However, assuming you successfully time it well, then following a foresight counter, pressing ZR will then go straight into the final spirit round slash or the spirit reckoning attack, which again will level up your gauge. So while this does require a little bit more practice and monster knowledge, knowing when you can use this can see you level up from nothing to red incredibly quickly. You just need to know the attacks of the monster, which will come in time. Now, newly introduced in Iceborne, we have the special sheath and the EI moves. Firstly, following any attack, pressing ZR on B will see you assume this special sheath stance. This sheaths your weapon by your side in this sort of badass anime pose, and from here you have two options. You can either press X to perform the EI slash, this draws your sword into a double slash, and if this connects with the monster, your longsword gauge inside the blade will go blue for a period of time. All whilst it's blue, this meter automatically generates on its own without the need for attacks, so it's incredibly useful for allowing you to more easily use the spirit combo, since you don't have to worry about building meter for a short period of time. Alternatively, following a special sheath, you can instead press ZR for the EI spirit slash. This is similar to the fade slash in that if done into an attack, it also acts as a counter, and successfully pulling this off will also level up the longsword gauge one level. 
What's nice about this move though, and this is new in Rise, is that if you mess up the timing, it no longer consumes a level of your gauge like it used to in Iceborne. So this move is now a lot more forgiving, meaning you can be a bit more reckless when using it. Obviously, you still want to try and use it correctly, but when learning the monster, you don't have to be so cautious. Play around with it, get a feel for it, you won't waste meter. This also leads into some very handy techniques for this weapon. See, learning to master the EI Spirit Slash is actually a quick way to build not one, but two bars. As mentioned, if you perform the EI Spirit Slash into an attack correctly, it'll level up your gauge, like so. But following this, much like the Foresight Slash, you can also input ZR again to do the final hit of the Spirit Combo, either Spirit Round Slash or Spirit Reckoning. And that attack also gives you a bar if it connects. So a well-timed Spirit Slash into Spirit Combo Finisher is two bars in an incredibly short space of time. Compared to the Foresight Slash, this is actually much quicker at leveling up the gauge, but it will require a little practice. Also, keep in mind that off the back of a counter, you can go straight back into a sheath instead. So if the window wasn't there for the Spirit Finisher, you're instead well positioned to just counter again. Furthermore, you can get really spicy with it, and assuming that you have Soaring Kick, you can then go from an EI Sheath into an EI Spirit Slash, and right off the counter, you can go into Soaring Kick and pull off that Helm Splitter. This consumes a bar, but upon landing, you can sheath again, and if the monster happens to run at you, you can then very quickly counter and get that bar back. It's also important to refer back to that simple stab move from earlier, your A attack. This is one of your quickest moves, and since both the Foresight Slash and the EI Sheath have to be performed following an attack, in the event you want to get there quickly, performing a quick stab is one of the best ways to open up these options. Outside of this, you do have your other silk by move, the Serene Pose. This is the one that you can't change, and it's performed with ZL plus A. This costs two wire bugs and sees you assume this counter stance behind this silk spider web. Taking a hit will trigger a powerful counter attack, and from there you can then press ZR to complete the spirit combo. However, it's important to note that this move not only consumes your wire bugs, but also consumes one level of your spirit gauge. So it's important to try and get into the habit of pulling off the spirit combo finisher at the end to replenish that lost meter. However, much like when performing a regular spirit combo, this action does require spirit meter, the meter inside your bar. So if you want to be able to end a serene pose with a spirit combo finisher, remember that you will need meter as well. Now, if you're wondering what the point of this move is, especially since it costs two wire bugs, consumes a bar, and you have other counters, the answer is the damage output. While this is a high cost move, the resulting counter attack can hit for some truly incredible numbers. So while it won't be something you use all the time, given a clear opening, it most definitely has value. Also, keep in mind, you can trigger it with a tiny barrel bomb, so it's a very powerful way for longsword users to wake up a sleeping monster. Then finally, just a couple more things worth mentioning. When jumping off a ledge or when in the air from a wire bug, pressing X will see you perform a basic vertical slice. Pretty standard stuff. Meanwhile, pressing ZR in the air off a ledge will see you draw into the spirit combo. However, rather conveniently, this jumps straight into the second hit from the spirit combo, so it's actually a shortcut. So from the air, you can simply press ZR three times, and this will then complete the spirit combo. Obviously, you still need meter, but if you have it, it's a nice quick way to leap into battle. So as you can now begin to see, while the moveset for this weapon is pretty simple, and there isn't too much to learn, there is a degree of mastery here that, when perfected, can make you truly untouchable. So now that we've covered all of the moves, let's talk about some recommended combos. Do keep in mind that the combos you use will vary depending on your opening. Some of your bigger, heavier hitting options are great, but if the time commitment is too large and the opening too small, then they will serve very little value. So in this section, we'll cover a number of available options for various different openings and scenarios. First up, you have your standard bread and butter combo. This won't deliver earth shattering damage numbers, but this is one of your primary means to fill your spirit gauge. And with leveled up spirit meter, assuming you're in red, then this hits for fast, consistent damage. It's also worth noting that if you pick Sakura Slash as your switch skill, and thus by extension don't have the Helm Splitter, then this will actually be a combo that you use incredibly frequently. It's fast, but also relatively safe, since you can roll out at the drop of a hat or cancel into Foresight or EI's Sheath at a moment's notice. Of course, secondary to this is your Spirit Combo. While typically used to level up your meter, your Spirit Combo is also a very strong combo. The damage will be greatest here if you use Spirit Reckoning, and again, if you happen to have picked Sakura Slash over Soaring Kick, this will also be one of your higher commitment moves that you can use to deal damage if the monster's down, stunned or trapped. 
Outside of this, when the opportunity presents itself, you want to be sneaking in your Helm Breakers off the back of a Soaring Kick. This alone is a high damaging move, even if you don't perform it off the back of a combo. Additionally, it's quite quick and relatively forgiving, so you can sneak it into much smaller openings. And then keep in mind what we covered earlier, when you start nailing your counters, going from an EI Sheath into an EI Spirit Slash, following that into a Soaring Kick Helm Splitter, and then upon landing, sheathing again ready to strike, this is some big damage potential. So now that we've gone over all of your switch skills, moves and recommended combos, the question remains which switch skills are best for you. Ultimately, again, the best ones are going to be the ones you enjoy the most. However, there are some definite picks that I think stand out above the rest. In the first slot, I honestly think Drawn Double Slash is a great pick, especially when you consider it doesn't completely remove your Step Slash either. You still have that when your weapon is drawn, so this is a very small sacrifice. You're literally taking away a quick draw attack for something that quite literally allows you to run into danger. The timing will take some practice, but this is a fantastic addition to the Longsword Toolkit. As for your second slot, I personally really like the Spirit Reckoning combo. I will say if you're new to this weapon, perhaps start off with the Spirit Round Slash. It's a lot more forgiving, so when it comes to building meter and learning the flow of the weapon, it might be better suited. But in the long run, the Spirit Reckoning does more damage, looks badass, and also has the added bonus of letting you reposition during that third attack. So it's nice if the monster hops back a bit or you begin the combo a little bit too far out. Then, as for your final slot, it really has to go to Soaring Kick, at least if damage is your focus. Nothing matches the damage of the Helm Splitter with a max red gauge, it's your strongest attack. So if you want to hit hard and split the heavens, then this is your best pick. That being said, again, if you're new to the game or this weapon, then Sakura Slash is a really nice option as it's very forgiving and it's an easy way to build meter. The main thing to note though is that with this in place, you don't really have any big moves that consume that meter as much. So your playstyle will focus much more around your core combo. It's also worth considering that if you instead decide to spec more into elemental or status longswords, then this is a good pick for that. It's a great move for applying statuses. So if that was your focus, then it may carry more value. Both of them are great, but again, if you're looking for some recommendations, then those are my personal picks. Now that we've covered all of your moves, the last thing you need to absolutely master this weapon is a good armor set. So when it comes to making your mix sets, here are some armor skills that are definitely worth considering. The first set of skills are skills that, in truth, pretty much all weapons can benefit from, and that is your typical damage focus stack. Skills like attack boost, Agitator, Peak Performance, Critical Eye, Critical Boost, Weakness Exploit, Latent Power, or even Maximum Might. These are all great attack and affinity boosting skills that can synergize nicely with this weapon. In addition to this, Handicraft is a nice option since it can boost your sharpness, which in turn helps with damage. And you could even use something like Protective Polish or Razor Sharp to maintain that sharpness for longer. However, one thing I do highly recommend for this weapon, in fact I'd go as far as to say it's now a must-have skill for longsword players, and that is Quick Sheath. In previous games, the difference was negligible, but in Rise, some of these skills have just been cranked up to the max. This is an absolute game changer for your EI Sheath, so definitely consider using this on your set. It is also worth touching on the armor skill Focus, albeit briefly. This isn't a necessity, but Focus can speed up the rate at which you charge your meter. And with just one point in Focus, if you draw into a drawn double slash and then perform the extended Spirit combo, working X attacks in between the first two ZR inputs, you can actually complete a full Spirit combo, which normally wouldn't be possible. So while this is super edge case, it is worth noting if you wanted another reliable way to pull off that combo. Outside of that, just consider adding in some skills that synergize with your chosen playstyle or that help support you in combat, and you should be pretty good to go. So now that we've gone through all of the basic moves, your switch skills, recommended combos, even armor skill suggestions, now it's time to tie it all together in a quick combat demo. Again, as always, this is not going to be a complete hunt. The idea of this section is to just simply put some of the stuff into action so you can see how it all plays out in an actual hunt. The target is once again going to be Rathian, the punching bag for the workshops, a very telegraphed monster, and just a great target for demonstrations. It's also worth noting, on this particular set, I am running Quick Sheath level 3, so I can get those very nice quick EI Sheaths. So to begin with, first things first, I'm running up to Rathian. I'm actually going to be jumping off my dog because I want to draw into the double slash because it generates your meter pretty well. And as you can see, I know that Rathian will always go into a roar. And as we discussed before, if you can go and pull off an EI spirit slash, you get your first bar. 
and you can then go straight into the uh, spirit combo finisher for your second bar. So by drawing into drawn double slash, I had enough spirit meter to be able to get the first bar and the second bar. So already, literally at the start of the fight, I'm already in yellow bar. I did, of course, miss my first silk banner jump, but the idea behind it, as you can see now, was to uh, jump up, perform the plunging thrust, so I got the blue meter for that regeneration, and then I can very quickly get into red bar. So right at the start of the fight, literally been fighting Rathian for all of like 10, 15 seconds, and we're already in red bar. So now, nicely positioned to be able to pull off Helmbreakers whenever we want. Of course, don't forget, generally speaking, when you, uh, you know, come down from a Helmbreaker, you do want to get into the habit of trying to, uh, you know, EI sheath so you can kind of be prepared for getting that counter, because any time, like with Longsword, we always want to be in red as much as we possibly can. That also uh, was less than ideal, but as you can see, hunts don't always go your way. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you do get clapped out of the air. But we pick ourselves up and uh, and we carry on. But as you can see, in this situation, again, I used up some bars. So my very first, uh, my first priority, priority number one, is of course getting back to red. And then of course I can then uh, take full advantage of, uh, you know, Rathian in the air is a great position to kind of jump into that soaring kick. It is uh, very easy to land. Sometimes with monsters a little bit lower down, you can have this sort of tendency to jump over them. Uh, you'll probably see that again in this hunt. But in the air... Rathian is basically just like a sitting duck. So a uh, perfect position. And again, if you're kind of close to a monster, make sure you uh, do it next to the head. It's generally a good way to sort of make sure that you're not going to be jumping past them. Also kind of a nice dunk there. I'll be honest, I got kind of lucky because if that was a second later, I probably would have got hit by the tail and got poisoned. So risky business, but you know what? It looks cool on video. Jumping forward to the next clip, of course, off the back of the Wyvern ride, just uh, ran Rathian into the wall. Again, first priority, get back up to that red bar. So using that spirit meter, one thing you'll of course notice, generally speaking, off the back of a lot of attacks, you kind of, you know, go into EI Sheath quite a bit just because it's a good stance to be in. You know, in that situation, I was kind of hoping Rathian was going to go and spring into an attack, so I then could have got a counter and got back up to red bar. It didn't work out, but it's, especially if you've got Quick Sheath, it's kind of a handy position to be in. Just pull off a big attack, go into Quick Sheath. If need be, you can cancel it, but it's useful. But that, my friends, is pretty much it. I'll leave a little bit more gameplay running in the background, but as you can see, Longsword is one of those weapons where, you know, you don't have too many combos to learn. It's just really about getting those few combos down and then just mastering your position, reading the monster, and then you really can get off some pretty sweet uh, sweet counters, sweet moves, and it just feels badass in the process. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope it has been helpful. Again, a massive amount of research and time has gone into these. So yeah, if you guys do enjoy them or you've got a friend that wants to learn the longsword, send it their way. Of course, if there is anything I have forgotten to mention, by all means, let me know in the comments down below. We do, of course, do our best to make sure we cover everything. Sometimes there might be the odd small thing I have missed. So definitely let me know. And of course, if there's uh, things that need to be amended, then later on in the future, I can, of course, uh, follow up with uh, Workshop Plus or Workshop Extra videos. But anyway, for the time being, thank you for watching. Be sure to keep it locked. Of course, we'll be covering all 14 weapons. If you've missed any of them so far, you can find the playlist link down below. But otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you want to catch more from us at Arix Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 Paradise Central and Vestmore streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch, and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.